Update 34 preview notes are here. Well, actually, they're the real notes this time. They just went ahead and gave us the full version of what's going to be going down in update 34 on Bloon CD6. We're going to go over it right here. The first one you see is our new boss balloon, the Dread Balloon. So now we have, what, four, right? Vortex, Lich, Blunarius, and now Dread Balloon, who has a shield. We got to take down the shield and then destroy what's underneath. It's going to be intense. And then, as you can see in this picture, we have a new Churchill skin, Sleigh Ride Churchill to go along with Snowman Pat. Fusty, that's pretty cool, especially for those co-op games. And then a new, what map is this? A beginner map? One, two, tree. That's pretty clever, like one, two, three. Now the biggest thing you're gonna notice on this update is that we are not getting the Beast Handler Tower, unfortunately. We were told we were gonna get it by the end of the year, but Ninja Kiwi is not ready to drop it yet. It still needs some work, which on the surface may seem like a big bummer because we were expecting it, but I think it's a good thing because it's not ready and we don't want something that's not ready because then we'll complain about it. So it's better for them to take their time and produce this beautiful, awesome tower that's just gonna blow our minds once it finally gets here. This sounds pretty awesome. New boss balloon, Dread Balloon. From the dark underground depths to the skies above, Dread Balloon brings the signature connection to the subterranean to combat even the toughest of monkey defenses. I just hope it's not as hard as Lich. I hope it's easier. Destroy Dread Balloon's earthen armor only to find a lead interior with new special properties. Complete immunity to different monkey tower categories each time the armor reforms? What the heck? So you're already with your sniper defense and it's like, nah, -uh, no, par <laughs> no military this time, bud. Even paragons in those categories are rendered temporarily harmless. Oh my gosh, so the whole idea of just rushing to that round 80 Apex Plasma Master might not work if it bans primaries for that boss round. That is intense. I, I don't know if I'm ready for it. I'm gonna be honest with you. And of course, everything that I'm reading here is gonna be left in the link in the description below, and you guys can check it out for yourself. We're just going over the coolest and the best things that I find in these update notes. Beginner maps are always awesome because it makes me feel good about the game because I can beat chimps usually in like one or two goes, so I feel good, you guys will feel good, and we get to try the new Churchill skin. What I'm really excited about in the trophy store this time around is limited time projectile swaps. So for the banana farm, we get presents instead of bananas. Ninja, we get snowflakes instead of shurikens. Sh shurikens. Dark monkey, we get snowballs. Tax shooter, we get icicles. I'm really excited about these projectiles because I'm still rocking the bones on my plane that I got from like a or a Halloween one a couple of years ago. And candy corn. I think I'm still rocking candy corn on my banana farm. The next section is what's not here yet. And they're just letting us know what's happened and why things are being delayed. Lockdown was a lot of the big problems. Now they got to get back to their families. They're trying to play catch up for all the time missed. And basically they're only human. They need some breaks. And we're gonna have to wait a little bit for all the awesomeness, but it's okay. Cause we got awesomeness to hold us off until then. What's gonna be coming apparently is a dark dungeon expert map in the beast handler. Those were held off for this update. But what they're saying is the beast handler, the tower is very unique. The beasts were completely different from any other mechanic in the game. And they of course required 15 new models and animation sets completely separate from the normal tower model and animations. Sharing more about the tower functionality than we have before, the beasts were also designed to synergize. So several handlers together would combine their beasts in order to enable higher tier beasts. What's, what the heck is that? It's like Power Rangers Mighty Morphin. But for beasts on balloons, in many ways, the beast handler was completed, bug tested, and nearly ready to release nearly up until last week. We thought the changes were making progress, but ultimately during the last play test of the week, we agreed that there was too much confusion with the combination system and how the beast would interact with other handlers. So it was just, it was just too big to go on right now. And they had to like take a step back is what it sounds like. While we're extremely disappointed that we won't be able to release a new tower this year, the team felt it was the right call to make if the beast handler was just not quite ready to be unleashed. That's great. I'm glad they went with that decision. A lot of game companies nowadays just like to throw things out there and then say, ah, we'll fix it later. And I'm glad they didn't. Like that whole debacle with the Pokemon game, right? I don't want none of that. We want it to be perfect. And that's what they're doing, which is awesome. This one I'm a little confused about, but I'm curious to see what it is. Boss events now support multipliers to boss speed and boss HP as an event rule. So does that doesn't mean we change it. That means it's kind of like an Odyssey versus an Extreme Odyssey, right? Like we jump in and it'll say like, hey, speed and HP have been increased this one. You're going to be like, oh great, even more HP than it was before. <laughs> Which just means more more times for me to tell Lich to eat it. Like this week's the Vortex on Encrypted and that, that penalty timer really drives me crazy. And so I'm not even trying. I'm not even going to try it because I'm like, I don't want a penalty timer. I'm just going to freak out and restart like 67 times with some like OCD of the penalty. So I'm just not going to do it. And then you say, well, why do it on rank? Because you have to do it on rank. Why would you play the boss balloon and not do it on rank? That's crazy. Enough of that. Let's get into this crazy stuff here because the balance changes on this update are madness. They're 
everywhere. There's tons of them. There's so much to go over. And I'm gonna do my best just to go over things that I can explain the best of the best. But look at the dart monkey, Francis. We got the juggernaut has been given a bunch of damage and more fortified damage to his little mini balls that come out. The pierce has been reduced a little bit on those little balls that come out, but for the most part, a lot more damage. So maps like encrypted or like Mesa chimps, I think it's gonna be pretty awesome if you wanna rock something like that. This one, if it's understood correctly, 400 more glaives on our boomerang monkey now ignores blocking objects. That to me means that it can go through walls. So if you play it on another brick, you can just shoot it through the wall. And if that's the case, that's going to be a great tower. But then oddly enough, they reduced the pierce on the Glive Lord to 80. I think it was like unlimited before, right? Or like, or darn near unlimited, like crazy amounts. Supreme saying it's going to cap out in those later rounds, which might be a little tough. But then we have the Boomerang Paragon price reduced from 400 to 325. Now I'm not sure if that's medium or hard prices or whatever not, but it sounds like it's cheaper than the Apex Plasmaster being at like 350. So that's awesome. But maybe if you add up all the Boomerangs, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than, the, than all the Dart Monkeys. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, it gives us something else to try. So instead of rushing straight for that Apex, if the Dart Monkeys blocked or something, we can use the Boomerang. That'd be cool. I don't like anything done to my bomb. So this one upsets me. I know it's just a little bit damage pierce or pierces from 10 to 8 on the Cluster Bombs. But I don't like that because I love the Cluster Bombs. I overuse it. I love it. This one is really, really cool to me. 004 Icicles can now target Moabs, but not slow them. So when you're sitting there and you're waiting for your Icicle and Pale, right? When I get that tower, you're just sitting there wasting the rest of the Ice Tower's upgrades. So I honestly, I usually just upgrade the Icicle Pale at the very end all at once. I don't even bother with the bottom path. Yeah, it helps for like 63 and stuff sometimes, but now that it can like actually stop Moabs for a second, that's pretty awesome. Or is it saying, hang on, hang on, hang on. Is it saying it can't slow them? Like they won't slow or they just attack like physically? Now I'm confused. We will just have to see. Now let me know if I'm reading this correctly. 300 Bloom Dissolver Pierce increase from one to two. Does that mean normally if you got a 300, it can only attack one balloon at a time, but now it can hit two? Because that's really good. That could make or break some stuff because that's, I mean, depending on how you look at it, that's doubling it. So now this will be kind of awesome if that actually does more than just the one. This one's a little silly, the Sniper Monkey. So 003, they reduced the price 500, but then they raised it in the Elite Defender. I guess that was a thing. Now the Monkey Buccaneer here, look at this. We knew there was going to be some kind of nerf to the Pirate Lord because he's been on a rampage, just bombing everything, pulling down all the mobs, he cans, regenerating way too fast. And we're like, okay, there's probably going to be a nerf because he's wrecking all these chimps maps. But what they did was they raised his price from 21,000 to 26,000. I still think that's a pretty reasonable price. And in a few months, I'll completely forget it was ever 21,000 and it probably won't you'll be like oh wow it's a cheap fifth here but for now that's five thousand dollars what are they doing and then this one the 500 flagship new homing style while working on the ace paragon we found a way to make homing appear much cleaner on super long range attacks so we'd like to try out this new setup on the flagship for a little experiment to see if this improves the gameplay feeling there i don't know exactly what this is entailing but it sounds like it might work it might be better because think about it like flooded valley you get the top 500 flag flagship and what does it do it whiffs it, every single attack it just whiffs 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 so maybe this will actually put it onto balloons and it will be awesome. I'm hoping that's what goes on because the monkey ace is the same thing. So the specter can also do it the homing style because you know the specter likes the, the miss. Like, I don't know what this was the specter. He just likes the miss, but now he doesn't have to. Had to nerf the druid. Of course, the middle path always gets the nerfs. He gets the buffs and he gets the nerfs. He's never allowed to be great. He's just supposed to be there. And now his pierce has been reduced from 30 to 20 and then the 040 is from 30. Oh, it's increased. So we reduced the lower one, reduced but no one goes for the fourth one. No one goes for zero four zero unless you're going for the spirit. And I myself love the spirit. And I don't even go from that much because he has very little use to me in chimps mode. He's cool. What are you doing to me here? Now, a long, long time ago, Oban was my favorite hero. I used Oban for every single strategy I ever made on chimps or any other thing for that matter. And I loved him. And now his wall of trees has gotten pierced from 5,000 and 9,000. It's nearly double what he can fit in his little tree thing now, which is pretty insane. Now, I would love just to sit there and have him soak up everything. Like, does that mean that he can take all of 95? I don't know what the damage of DDTs and stuff, but can he just literally suck up all of 95? That would be awesome. And if he could, I'm using Oban every day again. Now this one I'm gonna have to let you read on your own. There's a lot going on, but basically Sada has been getting a big, huge rework and it's here. As you can see, this is all for Sada. So level two here, Pierce is reduced, but then level three, the damage is increased. And then level three, damage over time increased. So it just kind of all over the place, damage increased, damage reduced. 
but it looks like she's gonna be stronger? Let me know below. But Sada's already great. I don't see, like, unless they just say, it's like, Sada's banned. <laughs> I don't see her being bad. She's too great. Definitely excited to see what that's like in gameplay, because Sada's my girl. I literally tell everyone to get Sada and Benjamin as fast as you can, because you could beat pretty much 90% of the game with both of those heroes. So hopefully this is a big buff rather than a nerf. I'm not the most technical, so I don't know what all this means, but I know that it's, it's a lot to read. <laughs> that's for sure. And then looking forward, what are we looking forward to Ninja Kiwi? Well, they're going to tell me right here. In update 35, the first updates of the year is to be smaller so the team can relax over the holidays, which makes sense. But we'll have Dark Dungeon and as much extra as we can squeeze in. Hopefully a huge fat buff to the Spear of the Force. I'm talking like the biggest buff you've ever seen to where we're going to use the Spear of the Force in like every single game. That's what we're going to be expecting in update 35. And then update 36, they're pushing to have the beast handler ready. But if not, then it'll be afterwards. But I think they'll be ready. They're they're nearly there now, they're saying. So I could see it there. They just don't want to get our hopes up and have it not be there. But I think it can be there. I believe in Ninja QB. And then there's some key goals here that we're looking forward to. Quests. That sounds fun. Multiple linked games with short narratives and special rewards. Quests. So it's like an RPG element to our balloons game. I love it. New heroes, paragons, and bosses, of course. New team events that aren't just the CT. That's pretty cool. And map editor and player creators. Which then I got back to here and I thought this was pretty awesome. Player creator payback. We still think that it's important to share back with player creators if they help create valuable content for others. Now, what I'm thinking they're talking about is mods, right? Is our lovely modders. Like, think about all the content you watch on my channel or anybody else's channel of all the mods. These, these individuals spend hours, if not days, making these mods. At the end of the day, a lot of the times, just recognition, just having their name out there. So to have them get some kind of payback would be awesome because they are busting their butt making these awesome mods out there, making the game even more fun for us than it already is. And I love that. I think that's cool. But that was a mouthful. I'm done for today, guys. That was way too much to read. But of course, everything that you've heard today and everything that you want to see is in those patch notes below. You can definitely click on that link. And if you want to see even more Bloom CD6 content, check out this video here. We take on round 63 with only one tack shooter. Is it even possible? You'll have to see here.